It's 15 hours. All right. Uh, it's 3 p.m. here in India, Bangalore. And I am live streaming this event for the first time. Uh, this event is also being recorded. Let me just wait up uh, probably for another minute or two to see if people start joining in. At the moment, I have uh, zero folks uh, who have signed in. But I intend to uh, go forward with the presentation anyways. Uh, but let me any just anyways just wait for about a minute or two uh, to see if anybody else joins in. I hope people have received the right links to join. Check those. All right. Uh, I think I should get started anyways. Uh, it's bright and sunny outside. That's how the weather is, uh, at least as of today. And all right, so uh, you know this this was supposed to be a physical meetup uh, uh, as per the original schedule, but owing to COVID nineteen, uh, you know, with the efforts to uh, uh, social distance ourselves from others, uh, I figured it'd be best if I just converted all of this to an online event. Uh, so this will be the first time I'm actually hosting something of this sort. Uh, I've not I've not done this before. I have not uh, spoken about uh, what I love at this point in time the most uh, before in front of an audience. Uh, looks like that's going to be the case even today. That doesn't seem to be anybody who's joined in. But um, all right. So uh, uh, the goal, or rather the the reason why I wanted to do this was to uh, introduce uh, some of you folks, uh, if not already, if this is something that you guys already don't know as to what is Google Apps Script. So. Let me get started there and uh, say what will this cover. So I would say the first thing is obviously about understanding Google app scripts, uh, what they do, what are the different use cases, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, essentially that would entail about uh, accessibility and how to RTFM. Uh, well, obviously some cool tech jargons. Uh, I think that goes without saying. Uh, I would also try and cover some of the required technical acumen, which is to say, uh, what are the bare minimum that you would need uh, in order to get started with using uh, Google Apps Scripts? Uh, I think this this would be one of the more cooler segments, which is what can App Scripts be used as? Uh, you know, there are ton loads of different use cases out there, a ton load of different implementations of uh, Google Apps Scripts, which I think uh, some of you may benefit from depending on what kind of need you may have. Uh, I would also look into a few of the use cases. Uh, so there, there are some of these amazing spaces uh, out there as of today, which uh, in some sense consolidates a whole bunch of things that folks have been doing in the app script space. Uh, so I try and cover a whole bunch of those uh, in this uh, in this particular presentation as well. And uh, of course, you know uh, where and how to ask for help and connect with G Suite devs. Well, that's that's the hashtag that that gets used a lot on Twitter and I think a whole bunch of other places. Uh, and so I would show you guys how you can go about asking for help with the right set of uh, inputs. And you would also see some of these uh, things that I feel I have learned over the course of understanding how technology works. So I try and simplify these jargons as far as possible. So this one, for instance, is uh, as you can see, it's a one one y or uh, Ali is what people typically call it. It's a short hand in some sense for accessibility. Uh, there's an amazing link. I would I would publish this slide. So you may actually go and click on the link and perhaps read about what the a -Y, A11Y project is about. Uh, there's also this cool concept of RTFM. Uh, if you don't already know what it means, uh, in very simple sense, it's read the fucking manual, which is to say uh, a, lot, a lot of these times when we are asking for help or we are searching for some solutions, uh, more or less, if you Google it, uh, there's a good chance there's somebody out there who's also faced similar issues and perhaps asked the same kind of questions. 
and there are people out there in the community who might have uh, helped these folks out you know which is uh, more or less you can you know help yourself first uh, and also learn on the go uh, right and i think it's important to also see as to what uh, this will not cover this is just so you know uh, we are clear in terms of what the expectations are uh, with this particular uh, you know session so obviously one building complex spreadsheet formulas this discussion is not about uh, creating spreadsheet formulas not that i'm not uh, happy to discuss that but this very specific session is not about it i think uh, there are a ton of resources and people out there who already do amazing job uh, in this particular domain and i think you should definitely check a few of those out i would share the link and the places where you can find some of these uh, perhaps later uh, in this session uh, this this is also not going to be a tutorial on writing JavaScript code. Uh, so a quick uh, note on that: I am not a techie myself. Uh, I am not a programmer. I am not a coder. Uh, certainly not a JavaScript expert in any way. Uh, I just happen to understand the code a bit more than what your regular Joe might, and uh, uh, I just happen to be good at Googling. But this entire session would not be about how you can optimize your JavaScript code or perhaps even write JavaScript code. And of course, this session would also not be about answering some of these philosophical questions, uh, which is to say false service are on the ground. Why do we call it cloud computing? I think those are some very nice quirky questions to have. Uh, but yeah, I don't have answers for those. And of course, the one I see uh, or hear more or less is you know our tech team doesn't have bandwidth to automate how do we convince them to help uh, this uh, discussion is also not about uh, being able to get over that particular hurdle either uh, right i hope i hope that helps uh, well let's get started right i think uh, the very the, the very first foremost and obvious question uh, for for those of you who don't know what is google apps script let me uh, so I've, I've tried to summarize this as succinctly as possible. Uh, it's JavaScript based, it's serverless and a low code platform. So uh, I would again share this slide perhaps by the end of this uh, uh, session where you can see what JavaScript based means. So there are different uh, languages out there. There are different coding languages. There's Python based solutions available. Uh, there are C, C++ based solution available. There are a whole bunch of different solutions and different tools that are available out there. Uh, Google Apps Script is built on uh, JavaScript and, uh, of course, uh, on its own APIs. And uh, that's one part of it. The part which says serverless, it, it essentially indicates that you as an individual, in order to use Google Apps Script, would not need to host any instances, would not have to launch uh, a server, a virtual server of any nature. All of that is something that is managed by Google. Uh, uh, again, all, while all of these automations and tasks and processes would be conducted on a server, essentially you would not be paying for any of that, which is why, uh, which is the whole definition of serverless. Uh, another important segment to know and remember it's it's a, that it's a low code platform, which is to say, uh, well, you have your no code segment as well, which is uh, more or less of a plug and play. And uh, this is essentially uh, Google Apps Script would be your low code platform. I think we have uh, one person joining in uh, at this time. But anyways, let me continue uh, with where we are at this point in time, right? So uh, in case you don't know uh, where to find Google Apps Script, uh, this is how you can go about searching for it. The very simplest way is to open a spreadsheet. Uh, you can go to sheets.new. Perhaps any of the other Google Docs, uh, there's docs.new, slides.new, or you know a whole bunch of other .new domains uh, that you can use. Uh, navigate to the tools section of it. You would definitely find that on the main menu and click on script editor. So that's the quickest, simplest way to find your uh, first app script uh, page uh, of some sorts, right? Um, in case you're wondering, uh, you know, can't scripts exist independent of Google Sheets or any of these uh, specific documents? The answer is yes, they can. Uh, there are different ways you can access scripts. One is, of course, with 
simply script.new. Uh, but in case you would want to access that from your Google Drive, you can install it from the G Suite Marketplace. It is as simple as installing an add-on. If you have not done that before, Google it. And uh, let me also then uh, you know, give a quick brief as to what do I need to know technically. I think that's another uh, important question that uh, in case you have not been coding at all or perhaps have not uh, had any uh, luck uh, trying you know giving your giving your, giving a first shot at what to code i think the first and foremost is javascript uh, you would need to know some bits of how javascript works uh, perhaps a beginner level course where they teach you how to you know uh, perhaps uh, declare a variable what are the different syntaxes that you would need to essentially uh, navigate through your code and so on and so forth i would also recommend having some uh, uh, idea of as to how html and css works because in case you're planning to uh, build anything on a front end uh, or, or rather create a, create, a, create your own web app of sorts uh, you would definitely need to have some sense of how HTML and CSS works. But in, in, in more or less sense, this is all it takes to uh, you know, essentially be able to do whatever you have to uh, using Google Apps Script. Uh, now, some of you may just be wondering, you know, do I though? I mean, is it really needed? Uh, the answer is twofold. Uh, no, I mean, if, if you already understand technology well enough, uh, and you know you are very well versed with googling using the right keywords and you know perhaps you are someone who is amazing at structuring your problem statement uh, but what i mean by that is you're able to articulate what the exact problem is and potentially ask for the right solution as well in that case you perhaps may not want to know how to code because you can hire somebody to do it uh, the other of course is uh, if you're you know again amazing at copy pasting existing code and retrofitting it to whatever your needs are because there are tons of open source solutions out there there are tons of different uh, places where you can get code uh, but uh, whether or not that may suit to what you need is definitely a question uh, but if you're able to do that then obviously you would not need to know need to know how to code and of course you know if you're if you're an expert at finding the right people or the right space where you can ask the question and get a solution perhaps you may not want to code and on the yes column is of course you know you you can search the fucking web and you would know as to why you should try and learn how to code of course uh now also let, let's look at what can google apps script be used as uh you know let's start off uh, with with the obvious one which is your standalone scripts uh the slide that you're looking at or the piece of code that you're looking at essentially creates a doc and emails the link to you now obviously that is not the most amazing use case but that's a really cool example uh, where you can just launch a new script um, you know write a simple piece of code to perhaps create a document and send the link to you in the email you can also think of this as um, imagine if, if you were to create multiple documents and share it with different stakeholders uh, within a particular group or perhaps an organization and so on, right? So instead of creating these uh, documents manually, you can potentially create a template, uh, write a script to perhaps copy that uh, particular sheet, uh, given that that's your template, and uh, circulate it across the right set of stakeholders. So that's one of the use cases of what your standalone scripts are. More or less what you would end up building using app scripts would be based on standalone scripts unless of course you're building an add-on or perhaps a you know data studio connector uh, that may not be the case the other way you can use uh, app script is via a container bound uh, which is to say it uh, the the gif as you're looking at right now is uh, a way where you can create an app script from a particular google doc uh, so you can do this with sheets with uh, docs with slides forms essentially you know uh, these four major uh, ways is where you can use container bound now some of the use cases of container bound are your uh, add-ons for instance uh, while you can have standalone scripts if at all you're trying to build something which is very specific to a particular doc it is recommended that you use a container bound one as that would help you uh, uh, code 
your script better because you get some special powers when you use container bound because you can access some of the core uh, constructs which are very specific to that particular container. Uh, so that's another uh, of the uses of app scripts. Uh, the other generic ones is your web app, uh, which is what becomes, uh, you know, let's say if you want to create an entire app uh, altogether and, uh, you know, an entire app, what I mean by an entire app is a web app is rather, you would have to have a front end uh, and more or less your front end gets powered by HTML with different uh, backend, you know, tech, uh, tech stack. But at the end of it, it is rendered using HTML. Uh, and also, of course, a database, give, depend, depending on the use case of that web app, whether or not you require a database or not, uh, you would need to have that. And of course, a backend to process whatever uh, from uh, whatever code you're writing to, pro uh, to essentially render that particular front end. So you can also build uh, an entire web app. The example image here is a URL shortener, which is powered by Google Apps Scripts. Uh, if you guys want, you can obviously Google it out. Uh, I will share the slides with you uh, at the end, uh, by the end of this session. You can click on these images and also Google it and see as to how the entire stack works uh, with web apps. So that's one of the other use cases. Uh, one of the other common or an easier form of uh, using app script is as a webhook. Uh, you know, here, in case you don't already know what webhooks are, uh, it is essentially one of the ways where you can capture data from, uh, let's say, a particular tool, a particular source, to another database or another place where you'd want to uh, basically get that particular information in. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to do with storing data. You can also create uh, workflow processes based on information you get from one source to another source. But uh, in this image that you see right now, uh, the use case, or, or rather the example here is, uh, my blog is hosted on uh, Ghost. Uh, in case you don't know, that's an amazing uh, content management service uh, called ghost.org. So I use a webhook uh, to essentially store every single email where people subscribe to receive notifications from uh, on my blog. So anybody on my blog goes and says, yeah, I need the newsletter. Uh, I store those information, that information, and uh, all the details on a spreadsheet using app scripts as a webhook. Uh, so that's one of the other use cases of Google App Scripts. Uh, now, this is another tech jargon. Obviously, some of you may know this, most may not. Uh, data wrangling is a process of simply transforming and mapping data. Uh, so it, your raw data may be, let's say, in a JSON format, or perhaps a query string, or perhaps in, 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 in an entire different construct altogether. But you want to you may want to wrangle that information and store it in a more, much more readable or a consumable format. So that's uh, the entire process there is called as data wrangling. Uh, the other amazing use cases, and now we are getting into a lot more uh, deeper and cooler use cases of app scripts. So one of those is essentially building bots. Uh, bots could be not just uh, the example here on this image is of a Google Hangouts chatbot, but uh, you can essentially enable bots even outside of Google Hangouts, which is to say you can create Telegram bots, you can create a whole where uh, Slack bots, for instance. Uh, Etc. where the backend is powered by Google Apps Scripts. Uh, the reason why ha Google Hangouts Chat is a good example is because there is no other way uh, where you can access as uh, the code and deploy the code as easily and as simplistically, uh, but with using Google Apps Scripts, because all of that is hosted uh, using Google Cloud Platform altogether. So bots is another uh, cool implementation of Google Apps Scripts. Uh, now, of course, I'm going to quickly also give you guys a, a taste of what else Google Apps Script powers. It's not just your simple automations. Uh, it's not just a very small, simple code. You can also build what we call as a Data Studio Connector. Uh, and before I could get to what a Data Studio Connector is, perhaps you guys can Google as to what Data Studio is. Uh, Data Studio is a tool provided by Google, uh, which mainly is used for visualizing data. Uh, you can also have constructs to wrangle data in that, but uh, its major use case is essentially to visualize whatever data using a whole bunch of different connectors. You can connect your AWS uh, databases, you can connect your uh, GCP, Google Cloud Platform databases, uh, Firebase databases, 
perhaps you can connect your google analytics account etc and visualize data but so that's what data studio is now imagine a saas tool an independent saas tool for instance sendgrid you have pilio uh, you have a whole bunch of fresh desk for instance right so any of these other saas tools which provide apis that give out or spit out data right you have stats uh, for instance uh, what i ended up building as an example was a data studio connector for sendgrid's global stats api uh, in case you don't know what send or you know what does sendgrid do google it uh, it's an amazing tool uh, through which you can send emails it's an email api among other things uh, it was recently also acquired by pilio so there is a data studio connector that i built uh, uh, and again uh, data studio connectors cannot be built any place else except google app scripts so that's another very amazing advantage uh, of actually knowing as to how app scripts work so besides that uh, your next obvious uh, use case is building add-ons so pick any add-on as of today on the g suite marketplace which is to do with your sheets docs forms or slides for that matter all and any of those add-ons are written on google app scripts uh, i have also published an add-on of my own uh, which is called workbook statistics uh, it's a feature in in microsoft excel that you already have uh, built in which basically tells you as to uh, you know what are the how many different data cells have been filled how many formulas you are using the number of comments you may have in that doc and so on and so forth uh, so i've built a similar add on to enable or enrich that feature on google sheets as well uh, but that's another use case uh, you can think of where uh, google apps scripts uh, plays a major major role now let's look at a couple other use cases these were the the one that we discussed so far are the different implementations um, I, I thought i'll also take you guys through uh, some of the use cases that people have essentially used uh, google apps scripts for uh, the one that was my personal favorite uh, uh, given its simplicity was creating a seat booking form with google forms with app scripts and sheets uh, now in case you don't already use google forms as much uh, it is very uh, unlikely that you can uh, change data on forms dynamically uh, there isn't an inbuilt feature in google forms where you can do that but uh, uh, there is this amazing uh, chap uh, called life of spy on twitter you can also check him out uh, this person essentially uh, has built a really nice script and an entire workflow where you can dynamically update your google form uh, as in when somebody is choosing those particular options uh, for instance as you can see now uh, uh the the gif essentially would talk about how if somebody selects a particular option the number of seats would continue to reduce based on the availability or based on the inventory in some sense so this is an amazing use case i would definitely recommend you guys could check it out later uh now in 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 a more, in a more non generic terms talking to third party applications uh, is another use case so this is a demo or a temporary workflow that i thought would uh, be a good illustration uh, imagine if you have a sheet uh, you know where you have two columns uh, one with long urls and the idea or the goal would be to shorten the urls so this is this is essentially be a url shortener uh perhaps not an app but essentially just a, a, a an application where you can fill your excel uh, the first column of a spreadsheet with the long urls uh, click a button perhaps and expect to get the short urls in the next column so this would be a workflow demonstrating that uh where sheets of course is your database uh script becomes uh, you know the tool that essentially iterates through every single of these long urls uh talks to firebase dynamic links because it provides you with rest apis to shorten the urls and essentially captures the short urls as the response back again into the sheets so and in this case firebase essentially becomes the third party application uh you know which provides you with the url shortener service technically speaking uh so this is a, a very simple uh workflow where you can see as to how app scripts can talk to third party tools third party softwares as well and of course store your data back in spreadsheets or potentially any other location you you may you may want it to be stored uh the other use case is that of a cron job uh you know perhaps plus a webhook 
uh, in case you are, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys may already be aware of what a cron job is, but if not, uh, essentially anything which is based on a particular time or on a schedule, if you want to run a particular program or a particular automation periodically, you can set up these things also uh, using Google Apps Scripts. Uh, so that's what that is. Uh, so this is the uh, workflow that uh, I have implemented at my current place of work, that's Exodel, uh, where you know we use uh, Freshdesk as a support system. Uh, so what this workflow would do is essentially, uh, you know, I receive emails from Freshdesk with all the reports that I need in a PDF format. Uh, obviously, I have to now categorize that on in my Gmail so that it can recognize uh, what mails are basically of what particular report. Uh, what I do then is essentially uh, have a particular uh, uh, time-based trigger using App Script, which reads all the labels of my Gmail. Uh, essentially, whatever Gmail label I would have specified there. It iterates through all the uh, uh, emails and checks its attachments, converts it in the necessary format, and essentially extracts all the data. Uh, when it extracts it, it stores it in the sheets. Uh, but simultaneously, I'm, I've also set up a webhook through which I get certain information from Festesk, and even that is processed through the same script. And all of this information ultimately is stored uh, in the sheets where you know I have two uh, quote unquote tables in a database, which is essentially tabs on your spreadsheet. Uh, you know, one which stores the SLA stats from Freshdesk, and the other stores the CSAT, which is customer satisfaction uh, score. Right now that I have the data, uh, it obviously just doesn't make sense to look at uh, numbers and cells, uh, which is where Google Data Studio comes in picture, and you know, it's a it's a very simple connector. Uh, within Data Studio, where you can connect your Google spreadsheet and essentially visualize the whole data set. So overall, that's the workflow. Uh, that's the use case that you can build. And in all of these things, it's a one-time setup, which is to say there's a one-time setup activity from Freshdesk. Uh, you have to just schedule the right set of reports that you need to be uh, you know, looking at to your Gmail. In your Gmail, there's a, is, there's a one-time activity of setting up labels. Obviously, there is the script which you have to write for the first time and perhaps even set up the right set of triggers. And of course, create a one-time activity of, of essentially connecting your sheet to the Google Data Studio and essentially creating the right set of visualizations. And once you have done all of these one-time activity, uh, the data simply keeps uh, getting updated every single day, perhaps at whatever frequency you may have set it as. Uh, and that's an entire automation workflow that could come out of it. Uh, so this is these are some of the examples, of course, uh, the repository that I was referring to where you can actually check out a whole bunch of different use cases is uh, this place called as App Script Pulse. On Twitter, you can find it at a handle App Script Info. Uh, this is something which is maintained by uh, an amazing uh, Google developer expert called Martin Hoxkey. Uh, he was the one who set it up, and this is where I contribute and uh, potentially, you know, uh, try and disseminate that information about Google App Scripts as and when I stumble upon that. Uh, you can, you guys can definitely check it out later. Uh, one of the other uh, very cooler implementations, uh, my personal favorite, is essentially building your own web app uh, you know, using Sheets as a DB. Now, before I could go uh, any further on this topic, I would also like to share a particular link that's available uh, at the bottom left of, of, that, of this presentation as to why you shouldn't use Google Sheets as a database. Now, if you are a techie, I'm sure you guys, you may have already understood as to the importance of a database is uh, the race conditions that it is supposed to handle, the concurrency that it is supposed to handle, the scale uh, that it is supposed to handle, and so on and so forth. And of course, there are a whole bunch of other reasons as to why uh, you perhaps should not be using Google Sheets as a database. But uh, the this particular uh, presentation or this particular uh, uh, you know construct is for those who are getting started with how to automate uh, something very simple. And I think for that, uh, people are, people should be free to use Google Sheets uh, as a particular database. So in this case, where you know you have a web app architecture, uh, this icon, that, as you can see on the extreme right, is your web app. 
and it gets powered by uh, a particular uh, schema that I've created in the center of this, which is uh, with the help of JavaScript or rather uh, Google app scripts or your GS files, uh, your HTML, which essentially becomes the page that gets rendered as an output, uh, your CSS to do all your styling activities. All of this is something that you can use or, you, or rather you can build using Google app scripts. And if there are any need to store or write information to a particular database, uh, you can quickly connect your app script with Google Sheets and I'm sorry, use that as a database itself. Here's a very not uh, very quick implementation. Um, as you can see on the GIF, uh, on the left hand side, I have a sheet with all the different data sets um, uh, that I've stored temporarily. And uh, you know, on the right is where I have a web app of sorts where it is using an autocomplete feature of materialized CSS. Uh, and as you can see, as in when I add more data, I'll have to refresh my web app, of course, uh, in order for the web app to be able to fetch the data uh, from the database. And uh, essentially, it feeds the information to your front end as well. So this would be a good source to actually have uh, sheets as a database. But depending on your use case, uh, you can take a call whether to have sheets or perhaps use uh, BigQuery, for instance, because you have BigQuery connectors within Google App Scripts. You can use uh, Firestore, Firebase databases, uh, if in case your data sets are too high or rather too big uh, for you to be using Google Sheets. So this um, you know, more or less concludes the part uh, about the different use cases and a few different implementations uh, of or rather Google App Scripts. Um, I was also hoping to take you guys through uh, some live coding uh, and see as to you know, if, if any of these actually make sense. So this is what uh, I propose we do. Uh, let me open up. Uh, so th th there are two things that I had, I had in my mind that I could show you guys live. Uh, one is, let's say, your basic mail merge or rather mass mailer, whatever you may want to term that as, uh, which would be uh, a sheet. I'm going to go sheet start new. In a sheet, in a spreadsheet, you may have data, uh, uh, for instance, of an e-commerce store where you have different orders and different people, name, uh, the, the names of different people, uh, and of course, the order statuses. And then you may want to send that uh, across through different people dynamically, right? So let's actually build, let me build my raw data here. So I'm going to write order ID, name, uh, order status, uh, email ID, and email status. So I'm just going to create a very simplistic uh, uh, view here. So I'm going to write George uh, as first. Order status, let me write it as ship. I'm just going to write, I'm going to just use my own email ID here. Uh, and let the email status be blank. We'll use that particular column to fill in whether or not the emails were actually sent. Uh, I'm going to write another order. Let me just keep it as John. And let me just put the order status as pending. And I'm going to send that to, to myself uh, on another email. Right. So this is it. Um, let, me, let me just keep it very simple. Uh, to access my app script, I'm going to go to, uh, well, I can do it in two different ways. The, the, one, the one way would be to create a container bound script, which is through tools script editor. Let's say if we don't want to do that, we can just go to a new tab, type script.new, and that should essentially spawn a new uh, app script file in our Google Drive. Uh, so the default view would be like this. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to rename this to something uh, that makes sense uh, for our current use case. Although, feel free to rename it to whatever you think makes sense. I'm going to change. So this is your JavaScript, uh, the, the, the default uh, way to basically write a new JavaScript function. Uh, in case you're not too familiar with how to write JavaScript code, do not worry. Uh, more or less, the app script code is uh, extremely verbose, which is to say uh, the way we write code is essentially, in some sense, the way you even speak uh, to another person. Uh, which is to say you can you can essentially write a code which says if x equals or greater than five do this or else do that so that's how simple uh, javascript code is supposed to be but then again uh, that's not uh, what this session is about which is to how to write your javascript code so i'm not going to cover much of uh, 
that, but let me send, uh, let me show you how this use case can actually be uh, taken care of. So you can you can rename the function to whatever you you think makes sense. Uh, let me declare a few variables that will help us uh, get help us connect to this particular spreadsheet. The way to do that is let's say I'm going to take uh, this ID as you can see on the URL, and this is uh, true for every of your Google Doc. You can open a Docs uh, Google Docs uh, Docs. Uh, you can open a Slides Doc. You can open a form, and you would always get this characters, uh, these uh, these data points, which essentially is the unique identifier of that particular doc. So in this case, I'm going to take that as my sheet ID. Uh, I'm also going to rename the uh, sheet, and so the sheet name here to avoid any confusion, I'm just going to help uh, clarify something. Uh, some folks confuse this to be the sheet name. While that is true, that is essentially the spreadsheet name and not essentially a sheet name per se. Your sheet name is something that you create here as tabs or sheets uh, in some sense. So in our case, the sheet name becomes master. So I'm just going to replace it with that. Now I'm going to call the spreadsheet app uh, within Google Apps Scripts. So as you can see, spreadsheet app is the code, and you know, to in, in order to in order for you guys to uh, familiarize yourselves with these uh, you know predefined functions you can also always go to the developer or the google apps script uh, developers portal check out a whole bunch of different references let's say if you're working on forms you can just go to forms and look at so if i were using forms now i would have invoked form app uh, if i were using a document i would have invoked document app or perhaps you know something else um, similarly, if I were using or rather trying to uh, uh, connect my calendar with my Google Apps scripts, I would have invoked calendar app. But since I'm using spreadsheet, I'm going to go ahead and invoke the spreadsheet app. Uh, uh, this is another amazing feature within Google Apps scripts where you can just insert a period or a dot. And then you can see as to what are the functions uh, that this particular uh, uh, you know, parent function is essentially in charge of. So in my case, what I would right now need to do is open by ID uh, because we have to first connect to that particular spreadsheet that we just created. So I'm just going to write that. I'm going to use another period to say uh, get sheet by name. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you know these functions. While it may seem complex in the beginning because you may not know what is needed to be done, that's the syntax part of it. Uh, but once you get a hang as to what the syntaxes are and how to go about initiating these uh, particular functions, it becomes really simple for you to read as to what uh, the function is supposed to do and go about doing it. Uh, so this part right here, uh, essentially, oh, all right, so I just put in my miss. I'm just going to put it equals here. So this part right here essentially allows us to invoke or initiate a particular variable, uh, which is SS, which essentially connects you, uh, connects the script to the spreadsheet. So once this is done, um, I now the next step that I have to do is essentially get all the data from the sheet in order for me to sort of navigate through each of these rows and send emails. So I'm going to do what data values equals SS dot get data range. So what this does is essentially takes the entire data range. So uh, in, in Excel terms, it would be, let's say, if you were in the cell, and if you were to type com command A, it would select the entire data set, uh, regardless of where you are. Similarly, uh, even if you were here, the get data range would essentially you know, capture till here. If you're using the, the function of get data range, it would have taken the entire data range till where the last data cell exists. But that's not what we're doing right now. But yeah, uh, so I'm going to go with get data range and uh, say get values. So what this now does is this particular variable called data values would store or rather would capture all the information that is there on the spreadsheet into that particular variable in something called as a 2D array. Now, in case you don't know what a 2D uh, JavaScript array or 2D array is, uh, do please Google that. I'm going to comment it out. Uh, for you guys to refer it later, but you can Google as to what a 2D array is and how to sort of navigate through it. It, it could get a little complex. Uh, it took me a lot of time to understand what 2D array is and how to go about uh, you know wrangling that entire data set. 
But I think once you get a hang of it, it becomes simpler as you go. Uh, now, there are different methods to go about coding this. I'm going to do with what uh, you know is something that I feel comfortable with. So I'm going to declare the headers so that I can reference them uh, based on their names. So I'm going to do zero here, which is to say the 2D in, in a 2D array, this, first, this particular row becomes the zeroth row. The first row is essentially your second column. The third row, the second row becomes your third column. The, uh, the, base, the, the third uh, uh, array uh, that you'd get in the 2D array, the third row in the 2D array becomes your third row on the spreadsheet. The second, rather, uh, in your 2D array becomes the third row on your spreadsheet. Uh, so it's i row and j column. If you guys remember uh, matrices from back in the day when you were a kid in elementary school, uh, you might have you know, a single uh, row matrix and a multi-dimensional matrix, and you may have the i row and the j column. So it has to do, uh, it, it basically gets uh, complex along those lines. But yeah, my headers, I'm going to declare headers here. Now I could go about declaring each of these independent indexes. So we can actually use it later. So I'm going to do an order ID index uh, and say headers dot index of and the search element in this case becomes the order id so what this particular line does is it takes the first row because it takes the first row because i've put it as zero uh takes the first row of the 2d array and uh, this is i'm just going to comment my code uh, i think these are the standard practices that you may uh, come across whenever you're coding uh and in case if this is the first time that you're coding or trying to understand how to code uh, uh make it a habit right from the beginning to actually comment your code it's very important uh people get into a whole bunch of different fights about these concepts as to whether or not to code and how much to go about coding uh commenting your code uh, so try and make sure you comment your code as far as possible so that you can remember what each of these lines is supposed to do and what what each of these functions is supposed to essentially do from there on forward so yeah so I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the index you would see as to why this is important later in the code but for now just bear with me when i say this particular function essentially gets the index an index in in any or in most scenarios starts with a zero so if it's your first row or the first column it's uh, the index of that becomes zero and subsequently every specific row or column will have just one number lesser as their index uh, you would again you know understand these things as in when you uh, get into coding a little bit more. So I'm gonna create index for each of these. Uh, so this becomes my name index, and I'm just gonna reference it by name. I'm just gonna copy paste a whole bunch of things here so I can get this coding faster. So, okay, we're almost there. So I'm creating an email ID, an index for all the email IDs. So I can reference or others call these things later as we go and i think we should be done with this last one there we go so this essentially declares all the indexes of the different columns obviously like you said um, there are different ways to go about coding this but i think i feel a lot more comfortable doing this uh, one of the main reasons why I feel comfortable declaring indexes of each of these headers is, let's say if you were to create an uh, insert a new column somewhere in between, your code would still hold good. You would not have to recode or rather refactor your code uh, in order to be able to accommodate these new columns. Because uh, in your typical SQL database or, or perhaps a NoSQL database, you may not want to tamper with your master code or, or the master database. Um, but in spreadsheets, that's not how it works. People typically just add or remove columns as and when they feel like it. Uh, removing columns is definitely a problem, but uh, at least if you if if people were to insert new columns uh, and not change the headers, of course, uh, your code will still work perfectly well. Uh, so once you have these, I'm now going to write something uh, called as a loop. Uh, what a loop does is it basically iterates to each and every single row. Now, which is to say, imagine if you had, uh, you know, 10 different rows and there were more than two people who, to whom you had to send an email to, uh, imagine doing that manually. You would, of course, have to go, uh, you know, uh, send an email to each one of them individually. That is essentially what the code would do. But for it to be able to do that, 
it will have to iterate through each and every of these rows independently. Uh, and we, we can, of course, do this again in a whole bunch of different ways. The simplest way to do that, or, or at least I know of, is to basically write a for loop. So I'm going to write a for loop. And this may uh, seem complex at first, but I'm going to try and explain it as, simple as, as simply as possible. Uh, OK, so what this does is I'm initiating another variable uh, uh, called as i. You would see this, I think, a lot uh, over the course of coding. I'm going to say it. let it start at 0. I'm actually going to start it at 1 because we have already defined all the header indexes, which is the 0th column already. So I'm going to make it start at 1. Uh, what I'm going to next do is also give it a condition here. The condition here for it to loop forward is the data values dot length which is to say your data values is a 2D array. The 2D array essentially is, let me delete this, is essentially this entire data set right here. That the number of times this function is supposed to loop is equal to the number of data set lines that you have. So in this case, you only have two rows, which is to say the code is only supposed to loop twice and not more than that which is what this particular function does, or rather this particular condition takes care of. And at every single loop, after the after the zeroth loop uh, or the first loop, it, it has to just increment itself again, which is to say, go to the second row. After the second row, go to the third row, and so on and so forth, uh, which is what that for loop essentially uh, would be taken care of. Now I'm going to, let's say, declare a row. Uh, and you're free to write these variables. All of these variables that you see here are not something that you have to memorize. You're free to declare whatever uh, is con you know, convenient for you uh, to actually code it out. Uh, it, this is just simple for me, so I'm just going to do uh, it the way that I'm doing here. Uh, so I'm going to do data values i, which essentially means each of these, each of this particular row is what this particular uh, variable row would actually be handling. So once I now have this, now I can actually start declaring, let's say, the order ID. Uh, the way to do this is row and the index of the order ID. As you can see now, now as you can see, this makes more sense. As to now, you're using the reference of that particular index. So what this does is it basically this particular uh, row variable, uh, given that this would be the row, it will actually see which index data is what you need. Say, for instance, if you needed the order status for John. Uh, it will actually be looking at the index of order status and for this particular row. Uh, so that's essentially what this function is doing right here. I'll just have to do this for all of the variables or the headers out there. So I'm just going to quickly uh, do that here. I'm going to do the name index. Let me just copy this uh, three more times. Well, actually, two more times. And in this case, it becomes order status and the order status index. Finally, we will have the email ID and the email ID index. I think uh, now that we have each of these variables, or rather now that we have each of these data points, we are good to uh, you know, finally, essentially, finally call the mailing part of it, I think, which is what is more important. Uh, and for that, I'm going to invoke something called as the mail app. Uh, again, don't worry if you uh, aren't sure as to what that is. You can always, uh, you know, look it up. Uh, just Google it and and sort of understand your way as to what that is. But uh, it's actually the same document as before. Uh, but it's just that instead of a spreadsheet, I'm now looking at how we can go about mailing it as part of script services. Uh, so I'm going to use mail app uh, and say send email. In this case, the recipient becomes your email ID. Uh, oh, my bad. Actually, before going on to the mail app function, let's also create two very important things, of course. One is your subject. Uh, you would, let's say, if you want to send a personalized subject to each of these folks, I'm going to write regarding your order ID. And I'm just going to say order ID. So as you can see, now I'm using these placeholders, or rather, these variables to substitute a particular static data. Uh, I think in case you, if you're a lot more uh, familiar with uh, spreadsheets, in spreadsheets, let's say if you were to use concatenate, right? The concatenate feature in spreadsheets here is, let's say your first thing is your order status is, 
and then you could just do ship. So here you go, you have ship, you have pending, right? So the same way you do this on a spreadsheet is essentially the way you can code it out using JavaScript as well, uh, which is what I'm doing. Let's just have written uh, the subject here. I'm also gonna write an HTML body instead of a plain text body. There's a difference there. Uh, I think you'll know it eventually as you go about coding things. So I'm gonna write hi and name. This goes to say as far as <coughs> personalization goes, I think that helps. Uh, I'm gonna write, now this is where uh, the, the art of HTML uh, comes into picture. The BR is essentially a break tag, which is to say, uh, you may want your you may want the body of the email to actually be a lot professional that you may want, and you can use HTML to actually build that. So I'm going to be very I'm going to uh, use very simplistic things here. I'm going to write a comma to here. Uh, your order status is, and I'm just going to write another plus. I'm just gonna substitute this here, the order status. Uh, and finally, we'll just close the email. Cheers, I don't think we need anything more at this point in time. So that becomes, what are we missing? Okay, we aren't missing anything. So you have the name that you're using, you, you have the order status that you're using, there's the order ID that you're using. Uh, and the body, let's just keep it blank here. The options, now in case you don't know what to use the options here as, you can just navigate here. Uh, now as you can see, the documentation itself, uh, you know, describes as to what needs to be done. You have your recipient, we already filled up the recipient, which is the email ID. Uh, we filled up the subject. We are keeping the plain text body is blank. Under options, you would find HTML body. Uh, so I'm just gonna write HTML body. So this is the, uh, you can see the example here. And again, you don't have to remember all of these things. You can just see the example snippet, uh, which is to say, just read the fucking manual and you would know as to how to create these uh, specific functions very easily and very simplistically. So that's what I'm doing at this point in time. And uh, we would also want to update the status in the status column, which is to say, after each of these, I would want to know if the email has been sent to these indi individual folks or not. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and invoke my spreadsheet. Uh, now, instead of using get data range, I'm gonna write get range. Uh, the row here essentially is not this row, this is the data set. The row here essentially is the indicative of you know the variable i, uh, but uh, the, the get range function uh, requires you to actually give the actual range as you would see on the spreadsheet. For instance, um, your column A would be the first column and not the zeroth column on a normal spreadsheet. And that's what your get range expects. Uh, but given that what we have declared here, uh, you know, uh, your i becomes an index value, we have to just add a plus one by the end of it. And in the column, we can again use the status index and plus one and just please essentially write a set value. Uh, and I'm just gonna hard code that to send at this point in time. And we should be good. Let's uh, let's test it out. So to test it out or to run a particular function, since you only have one, all you can do is just click run. Uh, you can review permissions. Uh, you will have to uh, allow app script to basically talk to a whole bunch of different things, which is in this case, uh, you know, uh, check your drive, check the spreadsheet, and also be able to send email as you, because you are essentially not the one sending it, it's the app script which will be sending it. Uh, give it a minute, it runs. You can go to your sheet. As you can see, the status have been filled as sent. I'm going to, I'm going to go to my email box, and as you can see, this is my app script dot in email ID. Uh, sorry about appscript.in and I've received an email from code at script.gs. And as you can see, uh, this is how simple it can get. Hi, George, uh, your order status is shipped. Cheers. And I'm gonna go to my Gmail as well. Okay, I have it here. I think it is just said because I'm sending the email to myself. Uh, I'm using an alias on my script.gs uh, domain. So as you can see uh, for from code at script.gs to sorab at script.gs, it's hi John, your order is pending. 
uh, which is what we had given. For John, it was pending. For George, it was checked. Uh, so that's how easy it is, or rather, it, I wouldn't really call it easy. But as you can see, it's it's less than about 30 lines of code uh, to actually create a mail merge or a mass mailer system uh, using App Script, using Sheets, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, you can obviously tweak this to whatever your needs are, your specific needs are. But uh, I thought this would be a very good example to actually live code and uh, yeah, you know explain you guys as to how this works. I'm going to close all of these references, uh, and you know let's switch uh, to you know the, the next parts of things. So I think one of the more important uh, constructs that I've experienced myself uh, is where can I ask for help. Uh, so the the reason why this is a little tricky than you may think is. Uh, not always you would you would know where the right uh, play you may you may know as to which is the right place to go based on your particular scenario so what i've done is i've created a small schema that should help explain uh, what could be the better place to go and ask for help uh, so let's say if you have code uh, you know it just doesn't work or is fundamentally just a little buggy uh, perhaps you can go to uh, stack overflow this logo represents stack overflow uh, you can go to Stack Overflow if you have code. Uh, there is Google's issue tracker. Now, if you don't know this, of course, please Google this, or you can use the link that's available on this Google slide that I'll share uh, soon after. Uh, you can also ask uh, your questions in Google groups. There's an amazing uh, Google App Script community, uh, which is maintained by Martin Hoxkey again. Uh, you can ask uh, people for help there. Uh, or, of course, you can just post a question on Twitter. There are some folks who are active. Uh, I try and be as, as, as active as possible to be able to help people out uh, with app script related questions as and when they have it. Uh, but let's say if you don't have code, uh, you just have a good idea or a really well defined problem statement. Uh, I think you should definitely not go to uh, Stack Overflow at first. If you go to Stack Overflow and simply uh, you know, share your question, hey, can you help me? Uh, there's a good chance you might just be kicked off, or rather, be uh, your, your question get uh, deleted because Stack Overflow does not work uh, as a source where you can ask for opinions as much as it is for fundamentally uh, very intellectual or code related conversation, or at least in the Google Apps Script uh, space. So I think if you don't have any code but just need a good sounding board, or perhaps even a place where you can start uh, your journey with Apps Script. I think a good place would be to go with the uh, Google Apps Script community uh, group, Google Groups, which is available. You can ask your questions on Twitter. But of course, uh, give your luck with you know the issue tracker in case you find it to be a bit problematic uh, to find as to where the solution is for a particular problem that you may have. Uh, you could also, of course, you know try your luck with uh, Stack Overflow. Although I would not recommend doing that. Uh, yeah. So these are some of the references on Stack Overflow. Is a dedicated tag uh, called as Google Apps Script. You know, please ensure you post your questions only that. Do not tag it as JavaScript because JavaScript is something which uh, has a lot more different features than Google Apps Script on its own. So if you only tag Google Apps Script, I think that should be more than sufficient. Uh, with Google's issue tracker, there are two separate links in case you want to uh, look at or rather figure out if it's a bug, if it's a particular bug. Uh, you can go to the bug report uh, uh, link. There's a new feature request link available as well. Uh, for Google Groups, that's the particular email. And on Twitter, there are a few hashtags that you know a lot of folks are dif uh, you know, different folks are active on uh, different uh, hashtags. But more or less, these are some of the hashtags which you can use uh, to ask for help uh, for the Google Apps Script space. All right, I think we are ending. Uh, we, we are uh, uh, nearing the end of this particular session. So I would also want to part uh, some things that at least I brag about uh, when I use Google Apps Scripts, right? So, uh, and this is more or less for uh, you know the folks you, you are talking to, or perhaps trying to understand whether Google Apps Script is a barrier to get adopted uh, within within your realm, right? So it supports both backend and frontend development, uh, which is with some of some of the examples that we just saw. Uh, that you could build web apps, uh, you know, a whole full-fledged web app which contains HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, your core constructs of a front-end uh, development. Of course, in the back-end, you have your uh, uh, time-based triggers, you have your entire uh, 
the the entire IDE, the 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 browser play space that you that we just saw at this point in time is the entire backend development altogether. Uh, that's something that you can do. Uh, you know, functions run both uh, on server side and client side. This may seem, uh, you know, a lot technical, but it's not. Client side code essentially just means uh, once you have landed on a particular web page, uh, you can also have some functions. It's that 16 run hours. Uh, I'm sorry, that's my clock. Uh, it's it's been an hour that I started, but that's nice. Uh, so yeah, so you can have the you can have app script. Uh, run client side code as well as on the server side. Your client side becomes, at, let's say, if you're creating a web app of sorts, which becomes a front end. So any code that runs based on whatever you do as an input or perhaps uh, in your uh, web app becomes your client side code, and whatever you know you are uh, running in your backend becomes your server side code, which is essentially uh, you know more or less the same as your backend and front end as well. Uh, you can access app script programmatically using REST APIs too, uh, which is to say uh, there is this new tool or rather recently launched tool called Clasp, which is command line app script projects. Uh, so most developers are familiar with terminal and uh, you know the code that they can write on a black screen, uh, you know where, where they can actually like access a whole bunch of different uh, coding platforms. So it has REST API, app script as well has REST APIs. You can extract a whole bunch of different metrics. You can deploy uh, your web app or Google app scripts using REST APIs too. So I think it's as uh, good as, as any other programming tool that's there, that there is out there. Obviously, there is amazing or kick-ass documentation, as I would like to call it. Uh, the documentation, documentation has taught me a lot. Uh, there are example code that's already available where you, where you can plug and play directly. As I mean, uh, for most of the use case, you don't even have to modify the code as much. So the documentation is amazing. There is great community support. Uh, you would uh, get us get an answer uh, in in, in a, perhaps less than a day or maybe two, uh, depending on where you ask your problem statements are. The answers uh, might just be that something is not possible, but at least there are people uh, actively available who support this particular community and this entire particular language as well. Uh, it is practically zero cost. You are not paying. Uh, uh, jack for this, but then of course you may have to do some maintenance, um, especially if you are uh, just getting started. You may have little more, or perhaps even less maintenance. But people who have been using app scripts, uh, in case you may have not heard it uh, yet, we just had a, an update on the version on which uh, the JavaScript version on which app script was previously running. Uh, so right now there's a, there's a whole bunch of migration that's happening with a whole bunch of different folks. And while uh, much of the code is backward compatible, people have experienced some breaking changes as well. And so which is why you may end up maintaining your code a little uh, uh, here and there. But I think that's part of the game with any coding language, uh, as and when there are better versions of that particular platform which gets released, you, know, you may have to update your code, which is practically good to be done any which case. Uh, and of course, I think, you know, lastly, all you need to get started is a Gmail account, nothing more. Uh, so long as you have a Gmail account, you would have access to practically do everything that we just did, or actually practically everything that we just saw in terms of its use cases and implementation. Uh, so yeah, that brings us to the conclusion. Uh, in case you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the link which uh, is showing up on the uh, presentation. Uh, or perhaps you guys are free to ask them now, and I'm happy to answer them. I think at this point in time, we do not have live audience uh, as much, and I don't see any questions here either. Uh, so I'm going to assume uh, there isn't much any. But uh, these are some of the places where you can also connect with me on. Uh, you can always write an email in case you would not you would not want to share your code publicly anywhere else. Uh, you can email me on code at script.js or sorub at script.js. I use an alias. Uh, I'm available on Twitter, uh, you know, Stack Overflow, and LinkedIn as well. Feel free to connect in any of these platforms that you are comfortable with, and uh, you know we can talk and chat about app scripts there. Uh, thanks for actually tuning in. This, uh, in case you missed it, uh, this was my first ever, uh, you know, live stream. Uh, meetup uh, that, I, that I've hosted at this point in time. 
I'm hoping this was informative, uh, but I'm open to whatever feedbacks that you may have. Uh, since this was the first, I have tried to make it as generic as possible uh, in terms of what you can do using app scripts. But I'm hoping to uh, potentially start with uh, what what we may have as support automations or perhaps marketing automations, uh, maybe you know accounts finance related automations, uh, you know things uh, HR related automations. There's a whole bunch. Uh, of things that we can do uh, along those lines. So I'm, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that Those are my thoughts at this point in time. Uh, I have also recently started uh, the AppScript community. In case you are here, uh, there's a good chance you may have stumbled upon this new meetup group that I've created. Uh, I am looking for people to help me out, build the community as well. Uh, in case you know somebody who's interested, not just in AppScript, but perhaps building communities there, you know, feel free to connect them to me. And uh, uh, I hope that this becomes a good place where you get to learn something or the other, uh, or at least try to automate your uh, copy paste related activities or perhaps any uh, manual tasks that you end up doing in your everyday work life. Uh, thanks, thanks again for tuning in. Uh,